Hi, my name is Art Turlop and welcome to ECE 2002. Oh, it gets so sick. What's new, pussy cat? Okay, everyone, so welcome to lecture 33. We're in the final uh, set here of lectures. I believe we only have 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, so five lectures total, including this one. So one week's worth. This is it. This is the end. Um, and today we're going to talk about the active realization of filters. In particular, um, we're going to look at low-pass filters. Obviously, we'll talk about high-pass filters later on. Um but then we're going to um, address intermittently here uh, some of the Butterworth applications of these filters. But the thing that you should be drawn to for this is the fact that active, okay, should be synonymous in your head with op amp. So what we've done in the past, the last few chapters, is we've kind of played the matchy-matchy game of trying to get those coefficients to line up nicely with the element values that we plug in and that works kind of we saw some limitations of this but in the long run it's not really a great solution so we need the freedom to be able to design these higher order filters and we need to be able to do it without inductors okay and the reason we don't want inductors is because they don't behave nicely so any of you that haven't taken any labs or anything like that yet um or don't have much experience, you know, using using real elements and stuff yet. Um, inductors kind of suck, and they take up a lot of um, a lot of space, and they have a lot of problems. And we're going to talk about those in the non-ideal elements chapter coming up. But basically, any time that we can avoid an inductor is a good thing. And with active filtering, not only do we get to avoid the inductors, but we also get to really control those transfer functions to a much higher degree. Okay, so let's look back at our transfer function and see what we can do to make this a little bit easier on ourselves using op amps, okay, if we even can. Which, by the way, spoiler alert, <laughs> we can. <laughs> okay, so um, here's our generalized transfer function. We've seen this for many weeks now. Um, we have a bunch of poles over a bunch of zeros. Now, we're going to split this up a little bit differently than what we've done in the past. We're going to take some coefficients up here, our gain factors, and we're going to break them up into these sort of uh, zero pole pairs and derive this ZF over ZI expression because we know that realistically, uh, S minus A is really just an impedance of some kind, okay? And we've actually seen this before. We've seen this... Uh, relationship, this ratio here, in our uh, amplifier circuits. So it all comes back right to where we started. So here at the end, we go right back to where we were. We're coming back to the Shire. Um, everything's great, um, except, you know, some of us are a little less well for wear and need to just, you know, be taken on a ship somewhere and live happily ever after because the trauma we've seen is just too much to even bear with anymore. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'm going to be on that boat. Okay. So anyways, um, off we go. We have our equation for our gain factor here based on this circuit. So if we design the upshot here is if we design our circuit to have particular values that we want in there, then we can get out exactly the kind of, uh, um, transfer function that we need. Okay, so let's, this is nice and all. How do we actually do this? Um, so let's take a look here. If we, if we take a simple, simple, simple circuit here, this uh, resistor and capacitor in parallel, and we analyze what its admittance is, right? The admittance equation looks like this. It's one over R plus SC. Now let's suppose, for example, that we start off with um, let's say we wanted something like negative four over S plus six. Okay. So we have an input admittance over, um, the, uh, I guess it'd be the feedback admittance. 
yeah, YF is standing for uh, feedback admittance here. Um, and so what we end up with is two different pieces. This one here, we just take the reciprocal of it, right? Because it, impedance and admittance are reciprocals of each other. So this is effectively a ZN, right? Um, and then this is, we're thinking about it in terms of uh, not ZN, but ZF. And so as we look at these expressions, this one becomes very clear. It's just a resistor uh, with a value one quarter ohm. And this S plus six, well, we know this equation here for the admittance. And so to derive this is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just gonna be one over six, right? Taking the reciprocal here um, for the resistance and then one farad uh, S times C here because the coefficient of S here is equal to one. Uh, one farad for the capacitor in there, in, in uh, parallel with each other. Okay, so that should make some sense. If we put these two things together, then we should be able to render out a circuit which has the transfer function that is negative four over S plus six, because we know that our rules for op amps follow that, that logic. So if we plug these things into the op amp, we have the following VN, right? And then our RI is equal to a quarter ohm. And then up here in the feedback part, we have one sixth ohm for our RF. And then we have this little capacitor here. Actually, it's not a little capacitor, is it? It's uh, in this scale, it's quite large. It's one farad, um, but that's okay. We're gonna We're gonna address that in a minute. All right, V out. Okay, and there we are. That's it. So here's our circuit. This thing has a transfer function like so. Meets our criteria, right? Hooray, we made it. And this is wonderful. This passes. This is totally 100% correct. However, we need a little realism. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing we've been doing all along, and we're just going to scale our values using the Km. Okay, so let's say that we want to scale our magnitude by a factor of 40,000. And actually, this is making it much more realistic, and you can see the values that it outputs over here um, make a lot more sense. So if we take our values, we go ahead and use our equations. Uh, this just becomes... For all the resistors, we just multiply Km to our resistors. And then for the capacitor, what we do is we just um, do 1 over Km for that. And so it's really not too bad. Uh, what we end up with is a 10 kilo ohm uh, resistor for the input, uh, 40 over 6, which is a little like 6 and 2 thirds, um, and then 25 um, microfarads for the capacitor. So same behavior, different values, okay? It's still doing the same um, filtering process that we had before. It's just that now we've just replaced these values in here. So if I copy this over, you can see that the transfer function is gonna remain the same. However, I just replaced these values with something a little bit more uh, realistic, All right? So this becomes 40 over 6 kilo ohms. This guy here, instead of 1 farad, 25 microfarads. And 10, 10 kilo ohms. Okay? And now this looks like a real circuit. So that's pretty cool. We've actually designed a really nice filter. Um, and we've met a very specific criteria um, that, that we needed to, to do. So... Now we're doing transfer function stuff and filter stuff and bringing this all together. This is great. Okay, I'm really sick of uh, messing up all my units. So I've decided <laughs> we're going to just start renaming them. So we're going to use ferrets instead of farads, okay? Because it sounds kind of fun. All right, so let's do another example here. Let's suppose we have a totally different transfer function. We already did half of it. And you say, well, that's nice, Art, but, um, you know, every time we start over one of these problems, you know, you change some of the values, and we got to start from the beginning, and blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, 
in this situation, we don't, okay? Because we have these different stages that we can lock in together. And by putting these different stages together, we can compile it to make that overall transfer function. Not unlike, it's, it's, we're, do, we're doing, we're just putting stuff together again. Okay, you know what? His name is Voltron, all right? Of course this was gonna come up at least twice, if not three or four, five times during lecture. But, you know, really it is, okay? That's really all we're doing is we're putting together pieces to try to create the overall transfer function that we want. Okay, so we already did this stage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that stage from before and we're going to plug it into stage two, okay? And this is gonna be our stage two, this guy right up here. All right, so if we break this apart now, all we have to do is analyze this part of the transfer function. And we just need to do something kind of dumb to put this thing together. Um, we're gonna actually go ahead and absorb this minus 10 into the numerator. I know we've said all along that, hey, leave it off to the side, leave it off to the side, leave it alone, don't touch it, quit picking at it. Okay, well, now we're gonna just let it go along for the ride. And the minus sign is gonna hang out up front here, okay? Because these are inverting amplifiers, so we're not gonna apply that through. But the factor of 10 is gonna go through, okay? And when it does go through, what we end up with is the same equation that we had before, except now our CI value is gonna be 10, 10 ferrets, and then our, uh, our CF value is gonna be just one ferret. We don't need that many ferrets, okay? All right, so we get some goofy element values. Ferrets aside, um, we have these bizarre resistance values of just 1 80th of an ohm and 1 tenth of an ohm. Uh, probably would be good to fix those goofy element values, and then once we do, we can link these two stages together. If we have some kind of requirement that says, okay, you can only have, you know, um, capacitors that are so big, right? Um, that's usually a good requirement um, where you can only have a capacitance of such and such. Um, so yeah, we can we can arbitrarily apply some kind of um, scaling factor here to make it a little bit better. And we're gonna improvise, adapt, and overcome, all right? I'm sure Bear Grylls would have something to say about utilizing ferrets in this situation. Wild ferrets probably. Um, we're not going to go there because we don't have the tools or the ferrets for that. But we'll do the best we can with the tools that we do have, which is mathematics. Um, we're going to use a 10k scaling factor. <laughs> I can't even do this anymore, you guys. Uh, it's a good thing there's only five lectures left. I'm so sorry if you're watching these lectures and you're not even my student. Why are you even here? You should just, just turn it off. Okay, so... <laughs> For yi, we have, um, for our input admittance, right, we derive a new uh, version for the resistor. And again, we're just using those scaling factors, um, 10k over 80, right? And we end up with about 125 ohms. Um, same thing down here, 10k over 10, we just end up with one kilo ohm. Uh, and then we end up with one millifarad and 0 0.1 millifarads for the other uh, capacitor, okay, respectively. So if we draw out this new capacitor, or I'm sorry, the whole new circuit, what do we end up with? Well, it's just a little two-stager, right? So let's do this thing. Before we had this, and you can look back in the notes here, this is going to be a, a quarter ohm, but we changed it, right? We changed this to 10 kilo ohms, so that's good. Um, and it doesn't matter, right? You can use two different scaling factors if you want, because really what we care about is the filtering characteristics here. So this was one-sixth of an ohm, and now it's about, I'm sorry, 6.67 kilo ohms about. And that's, I don't know what I said before, but that's what it should be. Um, and then 25 microfarads here. Okay, I'll stop with the farads, all right? <laughs> I've decided that ferrets are not a good unit of measurement anymore, okay? I, I think the scientific community, yes, yes, they have called me, and they have confirmed that ferrets are, in fact, not a scientific unit of measurement. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, here is our... Here's stage one. Stage two, Okay. You could even call it act one and act two, too, if you wanted to, okay? 
If you if you're really big into Sonic the Hedgehog or something. Okay, so there you go. You're too slow. You can go you can go really fast through these uh, circuit designs now. Once you just build this into different stages, it's very simple to be able to control exactly how to construct these things. And really, it's nice because you know you can take any transfer function you want, any any kind of filter process you want to do, and you just use the op amp. And what do you know? All those handy equations we worked with that first week um, pop right out and uh, do some great things for us in the frequency domain as well. Okay. All right, so that's our circuit. That's it. Um, we did some scaling over here. And then we did some scaling over here. And you can, like, go through this whole... I don't know. All right, we'll put, we'll put Sanic over there. Okay, great. So, um, two questions that are left to us are, um, are the Butterworth filter, um, can we make a Butterworth filter with this? And, uh, is this good? Well, is it good for complex poles? I mean, we've done this for some real poles, right? We said S minus A, if you look back here, um, we had S minus A here, right? So can we do this for complex poles as well? The answer is yes, but it's a little bit more complicated. Okay. So let's look at the Butterworth thing first. So with Butterworth filters, it's actually really easy to build this. So uh, just talking about first order Butterworth to, to begin with, and then you can kind of extrapolate from there. Um, you can use this guy down here for that first order, but in general, you're going to want to make things more complex as you develop more sophisticated circuits. Um, and so this actually works a lot better because it can be implemented along with other things. And so it's really good for stacking up. So recall that the first order Butterworth filter, the transfer function looks like this, right? Well, what if I had something to the effect of this? And as a matter of fact, guess what? This is our third order Butterworth, right? So what if... I had this. Now, from here, you have that whole ladder diagram, right? And that ladder diagram becomes a pain in the ass to try to analyze um, because you just keep on adding and adding and adding more elements to it. You don't really have these stages. And then what if I have this other thing over here and some other output voltage and blah, 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 blah. Your brain's going to explode, okay? Let's not do that. Let's use these handy-dandy op-amp uh, representations. And our lives will be much happier uh, and your brains will be happier for it too. So this is the first order Butterworth filter. So this has got this transfer function down here. All right. And then you can just use KM and KF to scale it to make it exactly what you want. Um, it's beautiful. But again, we want to be able to address this. So how do we even get to that point? Again, this is going to have some complex roots associated with it. This is nice. But we need some complex roots as well. This isn't useful until we can deal with the complex stuff. All right, fine. So um, we're just going to connect up that other op amp version, and then we'll address this guy separately. Okay. Um, notice here that the denominator here for that Butterworth is uh, as follows. You might recognize that Butterworth polynomial. So the thing that we're going to develop is called the Salin and Key, or the Key and Salin, if you you know you prefer that. <laughs> It's a great show, by the way. You should watch it. It's pretty funny. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll never look at an A.A. Ron the same way again. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, it's also known as a uh, Saraga filter uh, or Saraga configuration. Um, I have no idea why. I don't know the history of that name. And you can look it up and post it on Piazza and give us all a history lesson. Okay? Uh, I leave that as an exercise for A.A. Ron. All right, so let's talk about this circuit a little bit. What What is going on here? So first thing I want to notice here, and, and note actually, is the RA and RB down here, these two resistors that are down, sitting down here. So typically um, what this is doing is this is, we call this K. It's a non-inverting um, type of gain, okay, on, on the circuit. And you'll notice here that if you do some of the circuit analysis, that VA is equal to RA over RA plus B 
times V out, okay? And if you take RA to go to infinity, i.e. you're cutting this out, and you take RB and short it, right? You're just running the line across there. Then VA is equal to V out, and that should be pretty clear. Now, when that happens, however, you should notice that this is going to go to infinity over infinity, which is just a factor of one. So, the, the upshot here is... If you need this extra factor in here, which we're going to talk about, then you can modify RA and RB to appropriately meet that extra little K factor that's floating around up front. Um, but otherwise, generally speaking, you can just leave them off if they're not needed. Okay? All right, let's talk about the rest of this circuit. So this is a little bit goofy uh, to start off with. Um, first of all... Um, you know, we have things kind of arranged a little bit differently. So let's look at this from another perspective. And in this situation, we're going to uh, look at it from the perspective of this um, voltage driver here. So what we end up with, and this is kind of a long derivation. And I, honestly, the focus isn't on the derivation. It's on the, the result here. So I don't expect you guys to be able to rederive this. This is just for your own edification, okay? So at B, we have the following equation. Or I'm sorry, at A. Uh, so if you look at node A right here, um, you'll, you'll derive this. Um, you can see that these are, you know, voltages over um, some kind of impedances going on here, right? Um, and then that's set equal to zero. And then you have voltages over uh, impedances as well for this other node here at B. And the relationship that we're going to establish here is we're going to label K prime is equal to one over K times VA and set um, VA equal to V out over K prime, okay? Um, and what that's gonna do for us is when we derive our equation down here, it's going to make life a lot easier because then that uh, K prime value uh, basically dictates what's going on with our, our RA and RB, okay? And at the end of the day, what this does for us, once we do some derivations and we um, do some replacement of VA for V out over K prime, and we do some stuff with VB in those equations, uh, we end up with this final transfer function, okay? And if you want to do it as an exercise and, and derive it, great. Um, it'd be, be a good exercise, but not necessary for uh, a quiz or a test or anything like that. If I give you... I, if you guys are going to run into this, I will give you this transfer function, okay, for like a quiz or, or the exam. All right, um, so this allows for a transfer function with complex poles. Now, that may not be readily apparent here, but let's think about this for a moment. If these are all real values, right, and I can set these to whatever I want, assuming that I have enough liberty here with these, these equations... I could, in theory, create an equation that reads s squared plus 1s plus 1 here, and then a 1 on top, right? I.e., I can make that other part of my second, or excuse me, third order uh, Butterworth filter. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So here I have just a bunch of blocks, and we're playing the matchy-matchy game again. I hate playing the matchy-matchy game, but in this instance, it really works out nicely because... The, the, the letters work out nicely for us, i.e. the algebra works out really nicely for us, okay? So as it turns out, uh, 1 over R1, R2, C1, C2 gives us our omega squared term right here. And similarly, we can label K, an overall K, as this K prime over all that stuff, okay? So it's a, effectively, um, we can label this as K prime omega squared, right? So that's pretty convenient. And then from there, what we can do is we can also say, well, this middle term here, or excuse me, this middle coefficient, um, that's really our bandwidth, all right? And so in order to implement this, all we got to do is we just set two restrictions. We set um, this guy equal to one, and then we set this other part here equal to one as well. But if we specify that the K prime here since we want this guy equal to 1, and this part here is equal to 1, we say, hey, well, you know what? K prime is just equal to 1. Um, that lets R, B, and R, A go to 0 and infinity, respectively. 
So looking back at the circuit here, um, these guys both get nixed out of the circuit. This gets cut and this gets shorted. Um, no big deal. Okay, so that simplifies things a little bit. And I'm just left with solving this little riddle, which is effectively equivalent to, right, algebraically just this. So I have a lot of liberty. And at this point in time, I can just pick some values. And I can pick some nice values that'll work well for us. Okay, so let's do that real quick. Let's pick some values. So we're going to pick, as per usual, we're going to pick some simple values. R1 is equal to R2 is equal to 1. It's always a really good way to start out is picking your resistance value is equal to 1. Uh, and then from here, what we're going to do is go ahead and plug this in and solve a little bit. Um, we can try some things, but uh, first thing we could we probably want to do is look at this um, this equation, 1 over C1, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Uh, this has got to be equal to 1, so in order to do this, it's, you know, 1 plus 1, that's 2, so C also needs to be equal to uh, 2, so C1 is equal to 2 here, and then that means that C2 must necessarily be equal to a half, okay? And I know this sounds crazy, but we're done. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We did it. We're done. That's the that's the whole thing. So we've just created a we've created a circuit that has generated for us complex poles. How did we do it? Well, we took the transfer function of this circuit and we said, "Okay, I know what values. I'm going to play the matchy matchy game a little bit here." Um, but it's a nice equation this time, and it's a fixed nice equation, so I can actually solve out for these things pretty easily, and as a matter of fact, when I do, I get some really handy values, and when I plug this in, I get something very easy to work with, and then from there, it's just scaling, guys. It really is. Um, all right, so let's draw this out real quick. Now, recall that our overall transfer function was the following. This was 1 over s plus 1. Uh, let me go back here and double check. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so that yeah, so we had one in the numerator here. Okay. Okay, so and then this was times s squared plus s plus one, which overall was equal to the uh, Butterworth polynomial. Okay, so that was our transfer function that we endeavored to try to get. Now putting this all together, what we have is for, for stage one or act one, however you want to call it. Depends on if you had a Sega Genesis as a kid or not. Um, this is one omega. If I can draw an omega, that'd be great. And then uh, another omega over here. I couldn't think of something funny to call an omega. I, I, I ran out. So it was just ferrets. Sorry, guys. Maybe next time. Maybe next year. Maybe never. Okay, there, there goes that. That goes to ground. And there's my stage one, okay? This is the one over S plus one. So this is my VN. And then I just tack this onto my next stage. And here I have one ohm. I have another one ohm. This pops over. Oops. Got a nice little capacitor in there. This goes into the positive terminal. Don't forget that part. This comes over and that connects up there. And so this is uh, V out. And this here is just shorted through. Um, and so this is it. This is the whole thing that we have. Uh, nope, I'm lying. Sorry, this has to go to ground. <laughs> through something half farad and uh, two farads okay there we are doot 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 gonna ground it out okay so that's it this is our third order butterworth filter we can do some uh magnitude and frequency scaling as needed but that's pretty much it okay Since no one's saying anything, I'm going to assume that you all got it. Um, and uh, let's do a little follow-up example. So let's say if someone throws something a little bit nastier at you, right? 
you're like, okay, all right, that's great, but uh, what if someone put an S plus 8 up there, all right? I have some other crap down here that I need to work with. Okay, well, I already solved all this, so I don't care. I can actually go back to that first stage, though, and I can fix that and make it look better, more better, or more butter, depending on, you know, if, yeah, I'm sorry, that was a terrible pun. The Butterworth filter? No, nobody, nobody laughed at that, seriously? All right, fine. You know, I, I can put a laugh track in here. Don't make me get the laugh track back out, guys. We can actually do this from memory a little bit, right? So we just take what we had from before and we just modify it. So effectively, we can break this up into S, S plus 8 over S plus 1. And we'll go ahead and put that on the inside. Uh, times this other part, the second stage that we had here. Okay, so this second stage... stays the same. And the only thing we actually need to modify here is that first stage. And you may think, well, that sounds like a pain in the ass. Uh, you'd actually be wrong uh, because it's actually really easy to work with at this point. Why? Well, let's take a look. Um, we take our old first stage here and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna grab this thing like so. Copy, paste, okay. What did we have for this before? Uh, we had uh, one over S plus one, right? This was an inverting amplifier. So technically this was minus in here, but you get the idea. Um, and uh, one of the things that we noticed was that for this one here, our, uh, our Y in was equal to one, right? Well, in this situation here now, our Y in is no longer equal to one. So our new Y in is equal to this S plus eight, right? And so in order to get that out, we just use a one farad capacitor and a uh, one eighth ohm resistor, right? Recalling this equation, yes? So we use the capacitance here associated with the coefficient of S and one over the resistance value. Oops. Oh, I erase that. So it's pretty pretty straightforward to derive. So now we modify this circuit, and I'm going to do a little eraser mechanics here. Oop, 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 oop. We just change that input uh, admittance, and so we end up with the following. Uh, one eighth ohms and one farad. And then, of course, from here, you can just do your uh, stage two. This is your new stage one, brand new. And uh, you just do some magnitude and frequency scaling as needed. That's it. Really, really simple. And there's some other examples in the book and the, and the homework, I believe. Um, one thing to note here as a final follow-up is what if you just had the following function? Okay, what if it's just uh, S plus eight here, then what do you do? Well, actually this is a, is a good question and, and kind of simple. Um, but it's actually just this in disguise, right? And if we have a minus sign, this makes it a little bit easier because we're dealing with the inversion. Let's just assume that the minus sign is there for right now uh, to make our lives nice. But, um, but by and large, all we're doing here is just modifying that previous one, right? So we have the input admittance remains the same. And then the only thing that happens now is that our, um, our feedback, right, just becomes a one ohm resistor. And that's it. Okay, so if you just wanna take uh, some zeros for a ride, you can do that too. So that's really the power of these uh, op amp configurations for active filtering. Um, it pretty much puts all the other stuff we were doing in the previous chapters to shame, right? Because you're just like, oh, well, to heck with all that other circuit design stuff. I'm just going to grab the magical op amp and uh, go off and, and do wonderful things. And so you should, okay? Okay, one more example, because we have so much time left on our hands here. Uh, this one's from the book, so we'll kind of just walk the dog with this one. Um, so this is in book. All right, 
So this is really straightforward stuff here, but let's go over it anyway. Um, if you guys want to, you know, go ahead and get ahead on uh, the high pass filter stuff and you can then start to attempt some of the homework. I apologize. There's not any low pass problems um, in the homework set right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, as you uh, should become as no surprise, but the high pass filter stuff is eerily similar to the low pass filter stuff and just slightly more interesting. So those problems tend to be a little bit better for um, determining, you know, for making good examples uh, for things. Anyways, let's suppose that we have the following uh, transfer function that we're trying to construct using, um, you know, filters and the and the op amp here make an active filter. Okay, so if we're given the following transfer function, what can we do? Well, we're gonna go ahead and break this apart a little bit. Um, we can determine the transfer function um, and allow ourselves to have a k equals one uh, if we make this look a little nice. So we write this out as 6 over 25, uh, s plus 3 over s plus 2, and then this is attached to 25 over uh, s squared plus 6s plus 25. Notice here what I've done, um, and this is totally intentional, okay? So this 25 here and 25 here are matching each other. Why? Because when we look back at this expression that we had here, Notice that the numerator and the, or sorry, the denominator and the numerator, this denominator term, uh, had this same coefficient in here. So if I go ahead and kick that out up top here, then we're going to be in really good shape. So I can just kick this up in the front uh, and balance things out and deal with it there. And then I just need an amplification factor, right? It's, it's pretty straightforward. And this is the same kind of issue that we encountered um, back when we were doing the Butterworth filter stuff. Um, but now we're, you know, we're dealing with op amps all day long. So who gives a crap? We're just going to stuff it up here. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, use a simple uh, active filter stage for our real zero here and uh, real pole. And then we'll deal with the complex one separately. Okay. So notice here also that I've separated this out into uh, a real over a real and then a complex one. So this is going to be a nice little uh, silent and key, okay? And this one should just be a pretty simple uh, op amp configuration, all right? So nothing nothing too crazy here. Actually, I'll leave that there, even though it's impossible to read. Um, all right, so for the first one, we have our admittance is equal to S times C in plus one over R in is equal to and we applied those coefficients, right? We're gonna, like I said before, these, we, what we did in previous times in the long, long ago was we would just leave this sit out front. Now we have the tools to be able to account for these things and we needed this 25 here. So this one's gonna have to pick up some of the slack, okay? And it's gonna do that for us. No problem at all, no problem at all. So we apply this through and we need this to be equal to 6s plus 18. Okay, multiplying that six through. Similarly, the yf needs to be equal to, oops, scf uh, plus one over rf, which has got to be equal to 25s plus 50, right? And now we have a, a nice little circuit that we can build from this. It should be clear right away what this is going to look like. Um, so we have the following. Okay, so the book has a has kind of an interesting scaling factor in here, so it's a little hard to see the diagram, which is figure one, two, three in the summer edition of the textbook. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and write out this stage as follows, um, and then you can kind of adapt it to, you know, whatever you want to do for the scale factor. Uh, we're going to have this uh, input here, right? Resistance over capacitance. Um, our resistance is going to be. Uh, this 1 over 18 ohms, and then 6 farads. And then this plugs into our op amp. And then our feedback here is going to look like uh, 
1 over 50 ohms, and then 25 farads, which is awesome. Woohoo! And then uh, there we are. That's, uh, that's stage one. Okay, and then we can, like I said, we can go ahead and use some kind of scaling factor. The book uses a scaling factor, um, Km is equal to 900, and so we'll, we'll appropriate that at the end. Um, so keep in mind that the transfer function at the, uh, this particular stage would now be negative for the first term. So yeah, the book uh, notes that you, know, you have this inversion that, that's taking place here as well, um, because technically um, this one's not uh, inverting, uh, this one is inverting, so you gotta make sure that you put the um, inversion up there at the front. So if you want kind of a pre-stage, you can do just kind of whatever. Uh, as long as these resistors are the same, it really doesn't matter because it's about the ratio of the two, so you could do 10 kiloohms here and 10 kiloohms um, here, and just do one of these little old, you know, inverting amplifiers at the beginning. And that'll that'll do the inversion for you, get you that minus sign up here as needed because technically there's a minus sign here sitting around and there's a minus sign here that has to balance it out. Okay? That should be kind of clear. So pre-stage, if you will. All right. So now the fun part begins. Uh, we have our uh, silent and key filter. Um, so what we end up with for this is the following. We have uh, S squared plus 6S plus 25 underneath 25 here. We know that 25 is equal to 1 over R1, R2, C1, C2. And we also know that 6 is equal to that middle term, which is just 1 over C1 times R1, R2. 1 over R1, 1 over R2. All right? And so there's a lot of possibilities here. Um, and the book notes that if you select, right, if... We picked R1 equals R2 equals, say, 5, naively. Um, that would be fine and all, but then uh, we get, we end up with a C1 is equal to 1 over 15, and then a C2 would be equal to 3 over uh, 125, both of these in farads, or farads, if you like to adapt that as well as a, as a standard unit. Okay, so you can totally do that, right? There are zero consequences for doing that, except the fact that, you know, you have um, maybe some not as nice values for things. But again, what do we do to solve that? Well, it's all about ratio, so we just use the, um, the KF factor, or excuse me, the KM factor to fix this. based on restrictions. Okay, so now if we put all this together, what we end up with is the following. We end up with, let me just go ahead and grab this, these guys here. I'm just gonna literally plug them together. Won't that be great? All right, copy. Paste. All right, so there's my stage one. There's my pre-stage. And I never drew this one. Oh, well. It's pretty easy to draw, though, right? We just go back to our Salon and Key diagram. Um, where did it go? Here it is. Oh. I'm going to really cheat. Okay, check this out. Oops, didn't want to do that. Copy. Ah, don't go there. Paste. Little shrinky dink. Plug that guy in. And we just got to change some of these values to meet our that part of our transfer function. What do we say? We said uh, 1 15th and 3 over 125. So 3, oh, oops. 
Let's do some, get some other colors in here. Three over 125 and one over 15. And then we picked five and five for our, for our resistors. Ta-da, we're done. See how easy that is? Stage two. So if you have these pieces in mind, you can just stack them together and build your final solution, not unlike <laughs> Sonic. No, not like Sonic. Like, uh, like Voltron. Oh, no. Okay, close enough. Whatever. You guys get the idea. You're pros at this by now. <laughs> All right, gang. Okay, that should do it. We'll see you later.